In this video, we're going to look at the new Time Series Database option that's available on InfoWorks ICM. The Time Series Database can store time-varying data that comes in two different formats, either scalar data, which is typically inflow, level, the tidal boundaries, and point rainfall sources around the catchment, or spatial data, which is typically weather radar, where the re weather information appears in a number of cells across the catchment. In this particular tutorial, we're going to concentrate on scalar data. So that's data that appears as inflows to points in the network, or boundary conditions such as outfalls which are affected by a tide or a river, and r individual rain gauges that are dotted around the catchment as a whole. The network in front of us is a small catchment with outfalls to the northern part of the catchment that you can see up on this area of the model. At the moment, we have uh, both an inflow hydrograph to feed um, points in the network around the boundaries to the south and also a level file which um, provides the tidal influence at the main outfall that we can see highlighted here. In, on top of that we then have uh, time series data and there are a number of time series sources in this particular case but we particularly have uh, time series data that is uh, spread over four different areas of the catchment. So we have a rain gauge here, a rain gauge here a rain gauge here and finally a rain gauge about here and those are applying to the catchments covered in those particular boundaries. At the moment all of those time varying data sources, the rainfall, the boundary, level boundary and the inflow files are all separate data sources that need to be assigned when we run a simulation. So at the point you run a simulation with the current setup you um, drag in the network you then have to drag in the individual rainfall files, the individual inflow files and the individual level files before being able to run the actual hydraulic simulation. And obviously there is a lot of scope there for forgetting to attach one of the important files. There's also quite a lot of scope for having a mismatch between the information in the inflow or level file and the relevant connection points in the main network. Using the time series database we can um, correct for both of those options by bringing everything together. So let's have a look at how that's actually operated with the software. First thing we need to do is to create a new time series database option and add it as an, as an item to our database. And I'm going to just call it a scalar time series database because that's essentially what it is. And we'll put in some capital letters as well. There we go. So that's dropped the uh, a new icon has appeared over on the tree. What we can now do is to drag and drop that new database item onto the network that we can see. That forms a connection between the database and the network. And this will um, be one of the reasons why we can solve the uh, problem of connecting to the wrong points or missing connections. Having connected the database to the network, we can then use the network menu and we can import the data from the existing separate scalar files, the inflows and the levels and the rainfall, into this one database item. And this is just a simple drag and drop operation. So we can drag in the inflow file, we can drag in the level data, and we can drag in our rainfall profiles. As well as doing that, the operation will automatically create what are called TVD connectors in the network. And these are specific network items to deliberately connect those points in the network to these individual sources of data. These individual sources can all be at different time steps. The time series database has a function inside where everything is um, correctly aligned, even if the individual source data all have different time steps. So we can press OK at this particular point. The software processes all the individual files and produces a report confirming that it's processed the inflow file, it's processed the depth file, and it's processed the individual rainfall um, items into the one database. We can then look at the information in that database by opening the um, time series database icon. And here we have confirmation of our individual data streams. So three streams for individual flows entering the network, a single stream for the tidal boundary, and four individual streams representing the rainfall intensity that is landing on those four areas of the catchment. We can select any one of these data items and look at the individual time series data associated with that. So for this particular rainfall file, we can see the time series here starting uh, on the 28th of March, 
um, we can see the, the series going down, we can look at the individual values as they change, and we can, if we want, draw a graph of that information. We can do exactly the same feature for any of the other sources, so um, the inflow, for instance, that is coming in to one of these particular nodal points at the top of one of the legs, we can see the information there, again confirmation of the timings, and again we can draw the graph and look at that information just to satisfy ourselves that everything is imported as we would expect. Once that data is um, all in the uh, transport in, in the time series database, we can then uh, perform a new simulation with our combined time series data and our original network file. And the way we do that is to um, start with the normal run dialog that you have seen before. So here is the run dialog that was done previously when all of the files were separate. So we had an individual rainfall, individual inflow, and individual level data applying to the network. What we can do now is to um, update that information to use the time series database. Now, before we can do that, we have to first of all commit the changes that have been made to our network. You'll recall that when we um, attached our time series database to the network, it connected or made uh, connector points, T TVD connector points, and those are new items in the network. So we first of all just need to commit those changes to our database, uh, to our model. So um, we can just add in a comment to say what we've done. So we say added TVD connectors and say OK. And the software will prompt us to validate the network because obviously there have been changes, so we can say that that's fine. And there we go. And it's validated the network and committed those changes. Uh, we can see the picture confirming the, the network has committed. What we can now do is update our model to that latest version, so the, uh, the new version, the new committed version of the network, and we can remove the original time varying data. And instead, we will tell the software we used to use the time series database. We can just tick the box. Time series database is one of the modules in the ICM suite. So you need to have the ICM suite as an addition to your basic ICM license in order to use the time series database. Once that option is enabled, it's just a case of dragging the data into that one dialog box. And with that one drag operation, all the time varying data sources are connected. The uh, run parameters all stay exactly the same, and you can see here we're going to do a 24-hour simulation on this particular network. With everything connected, we just up change our title to say we're doing a time series database run, and press run simulation, and I'll just run it here on this particular computer. If we look at our job control box at the bottom, we can see that the network is being processed, initialized, simulation is running, it's just doing a 24-hour simulation. It's only a small network, so that run completes almost instantly. And we now are ready to look at our results. We have a new run icon in the dialog box, which we can open up. And here it is, run with our live data. So that's the uh, conglomeration of all the different data sources. Uh, the reason the title there says live data is that the time series database also is a key element of the ICM live package and in fact it's more typically used in that package than perhaps with the standard, <coughs> standard copy of InfoWorks ICM. So let's have a look at the results that we've produced. As you can see um, some of the nodes have already changed colour and what we can do now is just simply replay our simulation over the 24-hour period that the rainfall was landing. And as I do, you'll see different areas of the catchment lighting up in different colours. And as the different areas of the catchment light up in different colours, that's representation of the rainfall intensity falling on those particular areas of the catchment. You'll recall we had four different rain gauges uh, monitoring the conditions in the catchment at particular points in time. So we're now about halfway through the simulation. Rainfall has um, fallen away. The catchment has um, drained down almost entirely apart from the area just on the right hand side and now that area has finally drained away as well. Uh, the timer at the top of the dialog shows us that we're now reaching the end of our simulation and we've done a full 24 hours from the 28th of March. Uh, and the system returns to normal. So you can see there how we can um, very simply use the time series database option to um, m simplify the process of running models where you have a lot of individually connected data items. Uh, once we have our set of results, we can then use the standard tools that we have in the software to produce graphs, 
um, either of the um, flow in particular pipes. So we can have a look at the flow running down that particular pipe. We can see the response to the rainfall that's going on there. We can also look at uh, nodes in the same way. And this is one of the nodes that actually has got a connector, uh, a TBD connector coming in from the database. So we can actually look here and we can see this is the time varying data connector. So this will be the flow pattern uh, or rainfall intensity uh, entering at that particular point in the network. So TBD connector three was the connector for the rainfall in that area of the catchment. We could also have TBD uh, on 40 underscore 040 q which is the inflow into that particular um, pipe as well which we can see there and there we go that's the rainfall feed uh, sorry the flow feed that's coming into the end of that particular link and finally last but not least we can go to the outfall in the network where again we have a TVD connector uh, in this case uh, a depth connector where we are influencing the outfall from the network and um, this is simply going to show us the tidal depth um, that applies on that particular outfall as we go through. And that information obviously will match the original time varying files. So we could go back and look at the original um, inflow files or the original level files. If we look at the original inflow file, we can open that as a graph, um, pick our particular pipe that we're interested in. And that is the flow that was entering that particular pipe, which again is a match for the flow that we saw before. So that should hopefully give you uh, a quick overview of the uh, new time series database option that's available for InfoWorks ICM. And uh, that was an example of using the time series database with scalar data, which is a typically inflow data, level data and rainfall data that's recorded at individual rain gauges throughout the catchment.